Hello and welcome friends. Our mentor text today is called Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Abraham D. Bartlett and the Invention of the Modern Zoo. This is a nonfiction text and all the accelerated reader information can be found right on the video there. Also, the reason I picked this text today is because we are doing a lot of work this week on argumentative text, on persuasive. And one of the debates that we will be having is about the pros and cons of zoos, right? There are obviously arguments on both sides in terms of education, rehabilitation, entertainment, how zoos are either a benefit or a detriment to our society, meaning how they are either a good thing or a bad thing. So I just thought it was a good time to dig into some nonfiction relating to this topic. All right. Fur, fins, and feathers. Abraham D. Bartlett and the Invention of the Modern Zoo. Written and illustrated by Cassandra Maxwell. From the time he was a little boy, Abraham D. Bartlett loved animals. He was fascinated by anything with furs, fins, or feathers. His father knew a man who owned a collection of wild animals, including giraffes, zebras, and tigers. This menagerie was displayed in rows of bare cages inside a huge building. The usual way wild animals were exhibited at the time. People lined up and bought tickets, curious to see creatures they had never seen before. The owner allowed Abraham to take lion cubs and other young animals from their cages and play with them. Abraham loved the feel of their fur and the way their noses wiggled. He listened to them yip and yowl as if they were sharing their secrets with him. But when it came time to put the animals back, he felt sorry for them. They had no space to explore, no place to hide, nothing to play with. They didn't always get enough to eat and their keepers sometimes teased them. Abraham knew he had to find a way to help these animals. Abraham spent every night reading about aardvarks and zebras and everything in between. He dreamed of working with animals when he grew up. But in the early 1800s, there weren't many jobs that involved animal care. As a young man, Abraham found work preparing animal specimens for exhibits at the Museum of Natural History. The job taught animal anatomy, but it didn't fulfill his fondest wish, working with living animals. To keep his dream alive, he spent every night reading about camels and coatis, lemurs and leopards, just as he had as a boy. Eventually, Abraham's award-winning exhibits caught the attention of the members of the London Zoological Society. They asked to meet Mr. Bartlett. As Abraham began talking, the people were amazed at how much he knew about animals and astounded by his ideas on their care. The man is a walking animal encyclopedia, they whispered to each other. They were so impressed that they asked Abraham to be the next superintendent of the zoo. Abraham's dream was coming true. To celebrate, he bought a frock coat and a silk top hat. People loved seeing the tall man in the tall hat crisscrossing the zoo. They began to call him Papa Bartlett because of the tender care he took with the animals and the time he took to talk to the visitors. In those days, there was no safe way to sedate an animal if it was sick or hurt and needed treatment. When Wallace, a ferocious lion, had a claw that had grown into his tender paw pad, Papa Bartlett had to step in or Wallace would become lame. Two keepers secured the frightened lion with ropes while Papa Bartlett snipped and clipped, fast as lightning. Soon Wallace was himself again. Papa Bartlett snipped and clipped, fast as lightning. Soon Wallace was himself again. Abraham made sure that the keepers he hired not only loved animals, but also studied the science of animal care. It was an important step forward in creating a zoo where all the animals could be happy. Another time, a rhinoceros had a horn that grew downward and got in the way of her eating. How could Abraham win Miss Beth's trust so he could help her? For days he went to her cage. He scratched her ears as he talked in a calm voice. The week after that, he practiced cutting off her horn using his walking stick while he continued scratching and talking. When he sensed she was ready, he replaced his walking stick with a sharp saw. She stood perfectly still as he sawed off her troublesome horn. 
Abraham thought people would wonder why the rhino's horn was missing. He decided to post a sign to explain. When he noticed crowds gathering to read it, he got an idea. We should include explanations on all of our exhibits and sell guidebooks too, he said. It was the first time a zoo labeled its exhibits with more information than simply the animal's name. And then we have a sign here. Um, it says, Siamon Gibbon from Sumatra. It is the largest of the gibbons and also part of the family of animals that also includes the gorilla, the orangutan, and the chimpanzee. Scientists in Abraham's day were discovering thousands of species of animals, birds, fish, and insects that had never been seen outside their native countries. They shipped them to Papa Bartlett. One of these was a red panda. The animal was barely alive when he arrived from China, too sick to eat. Papa Bartlett took him home and experimented with foods until he found something the red panda would eat. Egg yolks mixed with sugar and boiled milk, tenderly fed by spoonfuls, brought him around. Before long, mulberries from Abraham's garden were his favorite food. Abraham realized that a balanced diet was vital to his animals. This made an enormous difference to animal care. In 1865, Abraham purchased the first African elephant to be seen in Europe. At the time, the elephant stood a mere four feet high and was caked in dirt. Scrubbed down, kept clean and well fed, he grew to be an enormous 11 feet tall. His name, Jumbo, came to mean anything of huge size. Papa Bartlett's zoo became a must-see destination. Visitors packed the walkways and jostled each other to see the splendid new array of fur, fins, and feathers. Even Queen Victoria came. But as exciting as the zoo was for people, many of the animals were still housed in small cages, much like they had been at the menagerie. Then one night, as Abraham listened to a lullaby of grunts, growls, hoots, and squeaks, he got a new idea. Abraham measured and made sketches. He drew up plans and presented them to the Zoological Society. Soon, architects, bricklayers, and carpenters were busy. They built spacious buildings with windows for sunlight and fans for ventilation. They added plants, trees, hollow logs, rocks, grasses, and ponds to create habitats that were like the animals' homes in the wild. Our animals need to be in enclosures so people can safely see them, Abraham said but they also need spaces to explore, places to hide, and things to play with. More than anything, we want them to be happy. By listening so carefully to what the animals told him, Abraham D. Bartlett became a pioneer in creating the first modern zoo. He helped people appreciate wild animals as never before. And, proud as any papa, he welcomed thousands of visitors to marvel at the magnificent animals, happy at last, in their home at the zoo. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that book. I will be looking forward to our next mentor text. You guys have a great rest of your day. All right, goodbye.